Good afternoon, it's Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Today is Friday, the 16th of May, 2008. The market's closed for the week, and we had another uh, positive session here. S&P 500 closed up uh, 14 cents here today. Um, not really uh, much movement, but still capped off a great week. This big green candle that you see here is now right up to that 40-week moving average or the 200-day moving average in this uh, prior level of important support. So we're going to continue to uh, be cautiously optimistic here. There have just been some massive movers to the upside this week uh, uh, in some individual stocks, in particular the shipping industry and the um, uh, uh, solar plays in particular. Solars just continue to just uh, scream to the upside, roasting the short sellers in there. Uh, but the S&P 500, as we know, uh, broke past this downtrend line. It's been holding it back. And uh, it's closed above it two days in a row. And you can see here on this uh, daily time frame, it's right at that 200-day moving average. A lot of times the 200-day moving average does uh, bring out some sellers. Um, doesn't mean that there's any reason to sell your long positions here just because uh, of a, uh, a, a moving average. A lot of times moving averages act as support or resistance. And it's import an important inflection point where you want to watch uh, price action carefully on shorter term time frames. And right now what we're still seeing on the shorter term time frames is that this market broke past a little bit of resistance uh, from this inverted head and shoulders pattern that I'd outlined. And, uh, you know, broke past it yesterday. This morning we saw a little bit of weakness, but nice recovery into the close here. And on the one minute time frame, uh, we can see that uh, here's that initial weakness um, it, in the market kind of flirted with the VWAP, but then broke past uh, some resistance right here at about 142.40. And uh, had a solid close here for the uh, for the day and the week. So on the 10 minute time frame, uh, let's go back to the 30. Actually, looking at this inverted head and shoulders pattern that I had outlined yesterday, um, the the height of this at about 138 and a half up to 142 uh, gives us an upward objective three and a half points higher, which again would bring us up to about that 145.50 level. And as I had uh, shown yesterday, that's also the uh, approximate location of the uh, two-thirds retracement from the October highs down to the lows that we saw in January and then March again. So those area, that level, is it just another potential area of resistance if this market can continue higher. So it doesn't mean sell or sell short in that area. You want to stay focused on where the action is and, and uh, uh, you know, focus on the trends of what you're trading. A lot of people are getting tripped up in this market thinking that, you know, just because oil is, uh, you know, continues to, to soar past, I guess, 126 now, that it doesn't make sense that the market's moving higher. The market doesn't always, you know, make sense. And, and what appears logical isn't uh, always uh, going to uh, occur. Focus on what you're trading rather than a perceived relationship that's supposed to be there historically or whatever. The semiconductors, as we know, broke uh, their downtrend. That's not what I meant to draw here. Was this downtrend line uh, first? And it's been, you know, started going back and forth and really got uh, kind of shaky in here. But then the buyers regained control right up uh, in about mid-April. And that group has been quietly sneaking higher with a very nice pattern of uh, increased volume on the up days, followed by uh, low volume in here as it consolidates. And then the buyers get uh, aggressive once again. This market is, uh, you know, holding above that 200-day moving average once again. And, uh, you know, in an area where we would, you know, likely expect to see some supply release to this market. So just something to generally be aware of. Uh, again, the financials, I think they're basically a waste of time in here. And that's enough said about that group for now. Um, the IWM, that's the Russell 2000. This group obviously has been, you know, above that downtrend line. And this uh, uh, 73 level has been the more important area, obviously. Uh, for for many months now, and the market, uh, you know, definitively took that out on Tuesday, and it's been continuing to grind higher here today. It was up 40 cents, or about a half a percent. Came right up to about that declining 200-day moving average. And when we look at the weekly time frame in here, it still gives us reason for some concern. Uh, concern doesn't mean sell; it means keep your stops tight and be ready to uh, exit uh, when there's signs of trouble. But right now, there are no signs of trouble. Uh, we could look at a trend line that looks like this, and basically 72, uh, you know, is is a potential level of support. But uh, obviously, you know, before that is met, I think that uh, you know you can continue to breathe e easy on the long side as long as this market holds above 72.75 early next week. Breaking below that, then I think we see a little bit more sell-off, and then maybe uh, this turns out to be a bull trap. But 
you, you can't you can't realistically look at this and think that it is a bull trap because it would have to fail first. So it's just a possibility of what may be developing. And you always want to be aware of all possible uh, situations. That way you're never taken by surprise. And speaking of that, uh, you know, Howard Lindzen, who created Wall Strip, here's what he had to say about my book. He says, the book's a great read combined with the daily website updates. You have all the technical analysis ideas and coaching you need to consistently make money. Hopefully you've been seeing the ideas I've been posting on my blog this week. Take a look at alphatrends.net and also go to technicalanalysisbook.com and order your copy. If you uh, order before May 31st, I'll personally autograph it to you. Uh, the Russell 2000, though, you know, is just kind of consolidating above that important prior level of resistance near the $73 level. And again, 72.75, I think you give it a little bit of room down towards there. As long as it can hold above there on any uh, pullbacks next week, then I think this market remains uh, innocent until proven guilty, and you give the buyers the benefit of the doubt. The uh, NASDAQ 100, uh, the Qs that is, let's take a look at that Fibonacci once again, because we're at a potential uh, inflection point for this market. It did close above that 61.8% uh, retracement, and you can't, you know, like a moving average or any other technical uh, indicator, you can't look at it. Uh, you know, with, you know, expect it to hit precisely on a number and then reverse. A lot of times this might be an area of distribution. So far it doesn't look like it at all. There's, you know, there's nothing negative about this recent action in here. The worst thing you can say is that it's up a lot without, you know, having a, uh, a, a big pullback. And, and uh, you know, if, you're, if you're, you can't complain about, you know, too much of a good thing here, just enjoy it while it's there. And, you know, again, it continues to hold above this, uh, 200-day moving average, which makes it really the healthiest of all these markets. You saw that, you know, earlier uh, or later last week, we got a test of that 200-day moving average down near the $48 level. The market held there. Now we're right back up to this $50 area. So the 30-minute time frame, uh, you know, the market's looking like it's getting extended, but extended markets continue to get extended uh, a lot of times. And, you know, right now, I think that your more important levels of support are going to be probably down to about 49 to 49 and a quarter. Breaking below that, I think then you've got a test of 48 coming. But right now, the market remains in a real nice uptrend with a lot of uh, great-looking stocks, and I'll be sure to post more of those on my blog uh, over the weekend.